Illinois State Treasurer says the state is on the verge of a financial disaster and is running out of time. Treasurer Dan Rutherford joins us now. Welcome back to the show. Uh, Mr. Treasurer, you've got, what, five days to pay off $8 billion. Uh, is Illinois going to pay its bills? Well, Illinois will pay its bills. The biggest concern that I have as a state treasurer of Illinois is the recourse that the General Assembly and this governor are looking at is to go into long-term borrowing, further debt. And I've put together a complete white paper on a, a, a compilation of the problem we have right now. In 2002, Illinois had long-term debt of about $12 billion. Today, we're at 45 billion dollars and the recourse that's being discussed right now at our state capital in Springfield is to go into the market and borrow another eight to nine billion dollars to add further to our debt just for the operations of state government mm -hmm. and I've said that this is not something that I think we should be doing I've been very much opposed to it right oh, and you've said publicly that you're willing to call up the bond houses call finance companies and say don't don't give my state money uh, because the governor does in fact want to do that have you made those calls no, I've not made those calls, and it, it, this was the, the point of a last, uh, the last resort. I think just by my having come out as publicly as I have and explained in real detail that the debt that every household in the state of Illinois has liable on their back right now, just in bonding, every household is $10,000. And it's $42,000 if you were to take in the unfunded liability for our pension systems. But I can tell you up front that the rating companies have already been very much aware of the problem Illinois is at. And we are rated literally right. only above California by two of the agencies. And actually, Moody's had sent me an email after they saw my statements and said, we want to clarify, Illinois is worse than California, according to the Moody's rating operations. <laughs> Which is why they, they've <laughs> given you that, that credit rating. But, I mean, if you're opposing the borrowing, uh, legally you can't prevent it from happening, though. So what that, can we expect by May 31st? Well, here, no, I can't legally stop it, but it has to pass by a three-fifths vote of the Illinois General Assembly. And my desire is to please encourage my legislative colleagues not to go with the three-fifths vote, to go into the further long-term debt. Here, the governor's proposed budget in the state of Illinois was $1.7 billion more in spending than the previous year. And according to the Civic Federation of Chicago, the governor's proposed budget is $2.4 billion greater than anticipated revenue. You know, it's pretty simple, and, I, and I, I don't want to make it so elementary, but it's pretty simple. You don't spend more than you did the previous year, and you absolutely don't spend mm -hmm. more than the cash anticipated to come in. And let me, let me add one more thing. That cash coming in includes a 67% income tax increase right. that was put into effect. Right. So we, we have to, Illinois has just got to get off of the addiction of debt. They have to stop borrowing for the operations of state government. So, but in the near term, with this May 31st deadline, what, what are you suggesting? An extension of debt maturities? No, no. Here, when you're saying the May 31st deadline, let me clarify. That is just when the budget needs to be passed. It'll right. go into effect on July 1st. So what I'm saying is pass a budget in Springfield that is not above what projected revenues are. If you do that, then you've actually started to curtail some of the spending that Illinois government's got going on. Of the $45 billion in debt, in general obligation bond debt, 58% of this, that's a significant part, 58% of that was borrowed just to put it into the public pension systems. Mm -hmm. There is no dedicated revenue stream to pay it back like you were to do if you were to do road construction bonds and you've got your motor fuel tax to pay it back. Illinois legislators and this governor have got to learn that they have to live within their means and not go out into the market and continue to borrow more money. So what gets cut? What doesn't get paid? Well, here, well, a couple things. First of all, we've got up until June 30th to receive a 57% match for, from the uh, federal government for Medicaid. I've said as a treasurer of Illinois, I will work with the administration on interfund transfers, cash that is in the treasury right now, short term, put it out there, capture the 57%, that generates well over 100 and some millions of dollars that we get in the additional 7%, get that done before July 1st. The other is then looking at where we are at in regards to spending. You know, we've got to, we, it, it, you can't come in, and that's the part that is so hard for people to understand apparently in Springfield, is you can't go out and plan a budget that's already gonna be $2.4 billion more than you've got in projected revenues coming in. So you said you're on the verge of financial disaster. You think it's gonna be averted? You know, it's going to determine what's going to happen in the last few days here of this General Assembly. I think that if yeah. we go into further debt, let me just be real clear. If Illinois goes into further long-term debt, I think that it just continues to exacerbate. Are there banks lined up to lend effect. to Illinois? I beg your pardon? Are there actual banks that are ready to lend to your state? 
you know, it's, it's one of these things. They're, they're probably ready to lend, but we are paying such a premium on the interest rates and the assurance on the bonds more so than any of the other states in the nation. Okay. So, for example, Illinois went into the market uh, in April of this year for a $3.7 billion bond program mm -hmm. to help put money into the uh, pension funds. It costs Illinois more, 17%. It would have been 17% less if it was the state of Kentucky. 34% right. less in interest if it was Missouri, and 41% if it was the state of Washington. So sure, there's always going to be somebody out there that's willing to lend to Greece and Iraq and Illinois, but it's not at a rate that the taxpayers should be willing to have to take the consequences for. That's a heck of a group you just put yourself in. Uh, thank well, you so I much, know. Mr. Treasurer. We've got to leave it there.